British motor racing driver Tom Price has been killed in a crash which also killed the South African track marshal. Price, who came from North Wales, was 27 and had raced in over 40 other Grand Prix. When I started researching Tom Price, I searched his name onto YouTube just to see kind of what other people had made about him. And all I found was clip after clip after clip of his crash. Unlike so many others who have lost their lives competing in the sport that we love, there is a risk that their death may become their legacy. So I hope that this video will be able to be used to put a spotlight on the incredible talent that was Tom Price and the incredible person that was Tom Price. And maybe one day someone else might want to look into him and search his name into YouTube and I hope that they see this. Welsh Dragon there in his helmet, had a clutch problem and in fact lost an opportunity for a victory even there. Now he's on pole position, what a tremendous achievement. Alongside him there is the Bravo and they're revving up the range of 8,500 revs. And so it's Tom Price now leading the Grand Prix, the John Player Grand Prix of 1975 on left wing. The standstill, out gets Vars, and now there's a new battle for second position. It's a battle between Patrick Depaye, number four, in the Elf Tyrrell, and behind him, Tom Price in the shadow, the Welshman. So now the in second place, an Englishman leads, and a Welshman in third place. That's how it stays at the end of the race of champions. Tom Price and his shadow Ford takes the checkered flag. John Watson second, Ronnie Peterson third, and Jackie X comes home fourth. But honours to the hero from Denbyshire, Tom Price. On the 11th of June 1949, Thomas Maldwin Price was born in Rosset, near Wrexham. Due to his father's job in the police force, he would move around Wales a lot in his youth. At age 1, he moved to Hightown and then to Brumbo in Wrexham. At age 4, he moved to Nantglyn in Denbyshire. At age 9, he would move to Tuin. And it was around this time that he learned English for the first time, before this only speaking in Welsh. At age 12, he moved to Roson C, and at age 14, he would move to Denby. This is where he would attend Llandrithor Technical College and begin working as an agricultural mechanic. This is also when his love of motor racing would begin, especially watching his hero Jim Clark win the world title for the Lotus team. And finally, at age 20, he would move to Rithin. It was also this year he would attend Mallory Park Motor Racing Stables, where his instructor would be Trevor Taylor who had been the teammate of Jim Clark in 1962 and 1963 when Jim Clark first won the title. In April of 1970, Tom would win the Crusader Formula Ford Championship, which would lead him to quit his job and become a full-time racing driver. And in June of 1970, he would enter his first professional race, where he crashes in practice after only three laps 
and doesn't actually start the race. But in 1970 as a whole, he would compete in 20 races, winning 5 of them. It was also within this year he would debut his iconic helmet design, which featured 5 black stripes on the top of the helmet after his dad suggested it when he couldn't pick him out in a pack of Formula Ford cars. Towards the end of 1970, Tom Price would reach out to Bob King of Royal Racing, borrow a car to compete in Formula F100. He would use this car to win the Formula F100 championship with ease, even to the point that his first win of the year at Alton Park, he completed it while still wearing his slippers. For 1972, Bob King would sign Tom with Royal as a Formula 3 works driver, where he would compete alongside the likes of Alan Jones, Jochen Mass and James Hunt. Tom would win the third race of the year at Brands Hatch, a track that would go on to be very successful for him. He would continue throughout Formula 3 that year, and at a race at Monaco his car would break down. He got out of the car and attempted to fix it, and this is when he would be hit by fellow competitor Peter Lamplow. Tom was actually very lucky to only suffer a broken leg, but somehow, five weeks later, he would return to Formula 3 and put the car on pole position. Also within 1972, he won the Super V Championship. American racing driver Danny Sullivan recalls a story about how Tom was asked one day to go drive around the Nurburgring ring at last minute. Sullivan asked him how it was when he came back and Tom just replied, I won. Every time I didn't know which way the track went, I just drove down the middle. That way I was always half right. And Tom would finish off 1972 with a few more wins in the Formula Atlantic Championship. He would continue competing in the Formula Atlantic Championship through into 1973 competing in 10 races, winning 3 of them, but would leave the series halfway through the season after an offer from Ron Dennis and Neil Trundle to compete in Formula 2 with their Rondell racing team. It would also be around then when Tom would meet Chris Meek of Titan Properties, who would go on to sponsor him. It would be a relatively successful season for Tom, with his best finish being a second place, but he would win the Grovewood Award for the best up-and-coming British driver. But more importantly, in 1973, Tom would meet Nella Warwick-Smith, who would later go on to become his wife. Tom asked her to dance on a night out and told her he was in the car business, because he thought if he told her he was a racing driver, it would be a little bit too much of a show-off chatter line. In 1974, Tom continued to do some limited races in Formula 2, but this time for Chris Marshall's Beatty team. Marshall recalls when he first signed him, saying, I put him on a £3,000 retainer, which was quite a lot of money at the time. I was told later on that his cheque hadn't been cashed, so I asked him what happened to the cheque. He said, I have it here, and pulled the cheque out of his pocket. When I asked him, why have you still got it? He replied, I haven't got a bank account and I haven't got a clue what to do with it. At this point, Tom was travelling the world racing. It was around this time when Tom first got friendly with fellow racing driver John Watson, who told a story later on about Tom about how they were in Italy once for an F2 race and they went to an Italian restaurant where Tom insisted on only ever eating chicken and chips. In 1974, Tom made his F1 debut with the token team in April in a non-championship race at Silverstone, where unfortunately he would retire after 16 laps with a gearbox issue, before making his official F1 debut in an official race in May of 1974 at the Belgian Grand Prix. Rega prend le meilleur en vol, et même si les commissaires belges sont sourcilleux pour le droit à l'image, cela n'empêche pas la Ferrari de mener, bien que Fittipaldi soit à l'affût derrière. Au 38e tour, apparemment gêné par la rousse, Regazzoni part en dérapage dans l'herbe et doit laisser passer Fittipaldi et même Loda. This race would also end prematurely after Jody Schechter would hit him whilst lapping him. The next race in the calendar was the Monaco Grand Prix. But due to the token team's lack of experience, they were banned from entering the race. Tom Price would make his return to Formula 3 that weekend, where he would win the race by 20 seconds. Motor journalist Ian Phillips wrote about Tom's win, saying winning at Monaco in those days was pretty special in F3. With over 130 entries and all the things that went into Monaco F3, you would get French teams turning up with big engines and dodgy fuel. 
for a Brit to be able to win in such a commanding fashion was an impossible dream. Also, coming back to F3 after a two year break and winning so comfortably just shows Tom Price's versatility. After that impressive outing at Monaco in F3, he was wanted by a few Formula 1 teams at the time. The two main ones showing interest were Shadow and Hesketh. If he was to join Hesketh, he would be teaming alongside F3 rival James Hunt, but he chose to join the Shadow team and would make his debut at the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. But his debut would only last a couple corners before crashing. But in only his third ever official Formula 1 race, he shocked the world and qualified in an amazing third place for the French Grand Prix. Although Nicky Lauda would try and put in an official complaint after qualifying that Tom was using too much of the curbs for the corner. But this was not upheld. Lauda. À gauche, Peterson à droite, derrière eux, Tom Price, une révélation. Voilà, c'est parti, meilleur départ pour Loda, numéro 12, devant Peterson numéro 1. Regardez derrière, on le voit très mal. On le voit très très mal. At the British Grand Prix that year, Tom would top the first practice session, winning a hundred bottles of champagne. He would also finish the race for the first time, coming home in eighth. But as only the top six got points at the time, he would have to wait to score his first points. But it wouldn't be a long wait, as at the very next race in Germany, he finished sixth, bringing home one point for the Shadow Racing team. Into 1975 now, and rumours started to rise that Tom Price would be leaving the Shadow team to join the Lotus team, replacing Ronnie Peterson. But this move never occurred. Alan Reese, the Shadow team principal, confirmed that Lotus definitely wanted him. And there are many different stories as to why this move didn't happen in 1975. Some say it was due to the two-year deal that Tom had originally signed with Shadow, although Shadow Team Administrator Jackie Oliver says the reason the swap didn't happen was because Shadow did not have the funds needed to pay Ronnie Peterson's wages. But it wasn't all bad for Tom staying at Shadow, because Shadow would release a livery that year that made them one of the greatest looking Formula 1 cars of all time. It would just get better for Tom in 1975 when he turned up to the Race of Champions, an unofficial race that took part during the Formula 1 season, where he would start from pole position. Taking the lead at number 6, the Black John Player Special of Jackie X. Close behind in the Tyrrell 007 is number 3, the young South African Yodi Schechter. And early drama. Right from the start, the pace is a scorcher. Tom Price takes second. He's moving up. Yodi Schechter still in front. Then tragedy for the South Africans. Just as Schechter seems to have the race all sewn up, he goes into the pits on lap 26. Tom Price in his shadow Ford number 16 takes over. John Watson is second. In third position now, the Swede, Robbie Peterson. So the order at this stage is Britain first, Britain second, and Sweden third. That's how it stays at the end of the race of champions. Tom Price in his shadow Ford takes the check and flag. John Watson second, Ronnie Peterson third, and Jackie X comes home fourth. But honors to the hero from Denbyshire, Tom Price. 
Tom would win the race of champions, becoming the first ever Welsh person to win a Formula One race. Although the race does not stand in the records as it was not an official race, I'm going to count it anyway, because I can. And it just got better for Tom, as the very next month he would get married. From Mrs. Vera Harmsworth, the silver trophy to commemorate a great race, the Daily Mail Race of Champions. In July of 1975, it was time for the Silverstone Grand Prix, and Shadow Chief Designer Tony Southgate recalls a practice session before the race, where team principal Alan Reese was keeping time to Tom as he went round. They were comparing the car with the long wheelbase compared to the short wheelbase, and when he went out on the short wheelbase on the first lap, Alan thought he made a mistake on the stopwatch, but on the second lap, he realised he hadn't. Tom was going 1.25 seconds faster than he was before. They quietly packed the car into the van, not changing a thing, and the very next day, Tom got pole position, becoming the first ever Welsh person to get pole position in an official F1 race. Sorry. Well, of course, the moments before a start like this is very nerve-wracking for the racing drivers. They've got to be cool, they've got to be calm and collected. There's not the possibility of getting overexcited at this time. They've got to look out for their clutch because in the French Grand Prix, Tom Price, who you're looking at right now with his Welsh dragon there in his helmet, had a clutch problem and, in fact, lost an opportunity for a victory even there. Now, he's on pole position. What a tremendous achievement. Alongside him there is the Bravo and they're revving up the range at 8,500 rev. Patchy got a wonderful start. It looks to me like Patchy's got a head advantage. He's certainly got an advantage as they come to Cop's corner, the first right-hand corner, and Patchy's in the lead with the Martini Bravo. Followed by Tom Price and then the Ferraris. The field very cool. There's a car slowly accelerating at the back of the field there. And round we come towards Beckett's corner now. The Brabham in the lead with the UOP Shadow second. The Ferraris following them. The full pack there, as you can see, entering one of the slowest corners, going through Beckett's corner now. The Brabham. Then third is Regazzoni and fourth is Lauda. There's a lot of moving and shoving around at the back there. Emerson Fittipaldi didn't get a particularly good start there, so he's got to find his way through. You can see them weaving in the slipstream. There's Regazzoni pulling out in car number 11, trying to get past Price, and they're going round store almost side by side. I don't think he got them, however. A lot of shuffling going on. No, Price is still in second place. The Ferraris trying to take advantage, that's Nicky Lauda on the outside of Ragazzoni, but he hasn't gone through, the two Ferraris shuffling around with James Hunt immediately behind them. As they go around club corner in this first lap, you can see an advantage already appearing with uh, Carlos Pacci in the lead with Tom Price in second place. They've opened up a gap because the other drivers behind them, the two Ferraris, are shuffling around. Now they're coming into the chicane in the first lap. This is where there could be troubles in this first lap when the tyres are not really warm. James Hunt in the white car tucked in behind the Ferrari, just going out of the screen with Jody Schechter behind him. The car's coming through there in orderly position. No drama in the first lap. Tom Price is closed up on the Bravo. The Ferrari of Ragazzoni is third with Nicky Lauda fourth and James Hunt pushing very hard as they go to the end of the first lap and start their second lap in three seconds. Price has been passed by Clear Ragazzoni. When we look at the other two cars, they're in club corner now and Clear Ragazzoni is in second place in the Ferrari. Now he's got to head towards the number one position of Carlos Pacci. Tom Price, there may be a slight problem in Tom's car because he's slowing down a little bit. But Ragazzoni in the number 11 car, then Tom Price, then Nicky Lauda's putting pressure through the new chicane at Silverstone on Tom Price, Jody Schechter. But there you have the second place car, number 11, number 16 is, is Price, number 12 is the Nicky Lauda Ferrari, as you see them streaming through there. Nicky Lauda this time leading the world championship in points a driver of great maturity probably the most improved driver over the last 18 months but the lead has stretched by Carlos Pacci probably because of the passing but as the rain started to fall Regas only retired his car and Carlos Pace pitted leaving Tom in the lead of his home Grand Prix becoming the first Welsh person to lead a lap in an official F1 race and so it's Tom Price now leading the Grand Prix, the John Player Grand Prix of 1975 on lap 20 in this 67 lap event. You see him with the news that there is rain falling on the far side of the court's course, in which case we're going to see tyre changes and that's going to be tremendously dramatic. The Brabham team changed in about 
13 seconds yesterday, but the Tyrrell team was even quicker on the special contest that they had. But Tom Price now will be anxious to extend his lead as much as he possibly can, albeit on these smooth, slick tyres. So Tom Price leading. In second position now, it's Jody Schechter, who's gone up from fifth to second in just two laps. In third position, it's Carlos Parchi in the Martini Brabham. Fourth behind him, Nicky Loud, and there it goes. Look at that, Jackie Stewart, you saw that. There's an accident for Tom Price. It, it's uh, coming out of the corner there. He slid off. He slid off into the barrier there. I think Tom's OK. It didn't look, it didn't look a serious accident. It looked as if the aerofoils and things like that flew off the car. But the marshals immediately, these wonderful marshals who have won the world championship of marshalling almost for the last three years, that's a situation that they're, look at the marshals holding their hand up, they're okay, standing saying that Tom Price is all right, just as the Welsh flag was flying there, but the, the circuit is very slippery now, they've got to come into the pits, now down to Barry in the pits. And as you can see... But in the very next race, the German Grand Prix, Tom would show his mental and physical toughness finishing a career high of fourth place in official races, despite having a fuel leak in the cockpit, causing him to have painful burns all over his back. would continue into the next race. Despite starting 16th on the grid, in wet conditions he was able to fight through the pack and finish in third place, getting his first ever official podium. And after the Formula 1 that season, he would take part in the Tour of Epic. With Dave Richards as his co-driver, he did crash into a bridge 10 miles in, but after repairs he was able to complete the stage and send the fans home happy. Now 1976 would be a mixed year for Tom, it would start off good with a third place in the first race, although it should have been a P2 if not for a mistake near the end. But results would become more difficult to come by as the upgrades were not coming for the shadow car. Despite this, Tom Price was able to achieve a fourth place finish in the British Grand Prix after James Hunt's disqualification. And finally, at the 12th race of a 16 race season, the Shadow team finally got some upgrades to the car, and Price was instantly able to show how good he could be again, qualifying third and finishing the race in fourth. And in the final race of the year, in awfully wet conditions, Dave Luckett, Tom's mechanic, had to drill holes into the monocoque of the car to let the water flow out the bottom but Tom Price came through from 14th to challenge for the win on the final race of the year. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Look at the stricken McLaren drawing to a standstill. Out gets Mars. And now there's a new battle for second position. It's a battle between Patrick Depaye, number four, in the Elf Tyrrell, and behind him, Tom Price in the shadow, the Welshman. So, Welshman in second place, an Englishman leads, and a Welshman in third place. And as Depaye in the six-wheel Tyrrell goes round the right-hander, here is Hunt on lap 48, on his way, he hopes, to his seventh official win in this year's championship. Hunt lead and Price! Price is out! Just before his engine exploded. Later he would joke about it with friends, saying, do you know how many parts there are? 
in a Ford DFV engine. There's bloody millions of them, I should know, I covered the track of them. Now we move on to 1977. This would be Tom Price's last Formula 1 season, and it was a difficult start, with Tom Price DNFing from the first two races. It's hard to find a positive to Tom's 1977 season, but I thought I'd try and find something. And what I could find was that he was featured in a racing and romance movie called Bobby Deerfield, starring Al Pacino as an American Formula One driver who falls in love with a terminally ill Swiss woman. Who is Bobby Deerfield? No one really knows. Not the crowds that cheer him. Not the women who make love to him. No one. Until her. I find you irresistible. Al Pacino is Bobby Deerfield. Rated PG. Check newspapers for a theater near you. And it was filmed during race weekends, so many drivers and personalities from the F1 grid at the time feature in this movie, including quite a bit of Tom. The director of the movie was Sidney Pollock, who is more fondly remembered for his work on films such as They Shoot Horses, Don't They? and Tootsie, as well as the film Out in Africa, in which he won the Oscar for Best Director. Um, after filming the movie, he gave Tom his number and told him to give him a call as he felt that Tom had a future on the big screen. I very much doubt that Tom would have called him, but it's nice to know that someone appreciated his natural charisma. And now we move to Tom's final race weekend at the South African Grand Prix. He started the weekend well by topping a wet practice session, but as the session dried out, the lack of performance of the shadow car started to show as he qualified 15th, his lowest starting position of the year so far. He also made a dreadful start falling to last place, but in true Tom Price fashion, he fought through the grid, and by lap 18, he'd gained 9 places. Not too far ahead of him, Renzo Zorzi retired his car as his engine caught fire. Two marshals on the other side of the track saw this and ran across the track without permission to put out the fire. One of the marshals was 19-year-old Frederick Jansen van Veren, who was holding the 18 kilo fire extinguisher. And as they ran across the track, Tom Price came across the brow of the hill. Price was not able to see Van Veren and hit him at 170 miles per hour, killing him instantly. The fire extinguisher that he'd been holding hit Tom on the head. The force at which it hit was enough to throw it up in the air and over a nearby grandstand. The impact of the fire extinguisher wrenched Tom's helmet backwards, almost certainly killing him instantly, although Price's car would continue at speed with him dead at the wheel. It would scrape the wall before hitting another car and sending them both into the barrier. Thankfully, the other driver was okay, but Tom and the Marshal were not so lucky. After the crash, Shadow Team Administrator Jackie Oliver had to go to the mortuary and said that Tom was entirely unrecognisable. Tom's funeral will be held at St Bartholomew's in Otford, the same church where he got married just two years earlier. Many of F1's biggest names at the time attended to show their respect, such as Jackie Stewart and James Hunt. You could hear him about three miles away in his minivan because you could tell it was flat out all the way, never braked on any corner. I think the thing that stood out for everybody was extraordinary car control. He had such phenomenal control. Thomas was always up the front, even in a compact car that wasn't competitive. He's got an enormous amount of natural talent, and of course every driver needs to have this. Tom Price, he was a driver who was on his way up. An honest young man, driven by a dream. All he wanted to do was drive. He always battled on, always. To me, he'll always be that devastatingly handsome young man. He was very, very modest, in capital letters. I have absolutely no hesitation in saying that I believe Tom could have been a world champion. Tom was an exceptional driver and he totally justified 
the fact of being taken from Formula 3 and getting into Formula 1. So it was a tragedy what occurred. He would have been world champion who knows how many times. There is no question about that because he was so good, so fast, and also so nice with it. So he would have been a great world champion. He would have been one that I think the country, that the, not just Wales, but uh, the UK and the world would have respected because he's a nice lad. of June 2009, Nella Price revealed a mural in Riffin, dedicated to Tom. And during the redesign of the Anglesey Circuit, they renamed a section of the track the Tom Price Strait. When I started researching Tom Price, I searched his name onto YouTube, just to see kind of what other people have made about him. And all I found was clip after clip after clip of his crash. Unlike so many others who have lost their lives competing in the sport that we love, there is a risk that their death may become their legacy. So I hope that this video will be able to be used to put a spotlight on the incredible talent that was Tom Price, and the incredible person that was Tom Price, and maybe one day someone else might want to look into him and search his name into YouTube and I hope that they see this and they learn the stories of a shy kind Welsh boy who had a dream and followed it and I hope they come away from it thinking about an incredibly talented driver who was lost far too soon rather than just another driver who had an awful crash. <laughs>